We designed this so that way the electrical components would be in the front part here. It was fairly complicated actually. We have three 200 amp hour Renogy batteries. You're always going to have errors in every custom project. Hey, or Christine, I see here and welcome back to the, our channel. This is Matt. He is going to do an overview of our electrical components in the van. Part two will be a more detailed version of all our electrical components so you'll know how we installed or how he installed because he's doing the majority of the work. How are we doing everyone? This is just an overview on the electrical components as Christine said. We'll go into detail in the other video on some of the installation parts but if you have any questions I don't want to say I'm an expert but I do have a general idea enough that I got this done. All right so let's take a look here and see what we have. We knew we were building an L couch here, so we designed this so that way the electrical components would be in the front part here, partially because they're close to then the uh, batteries for the chassis batteries and where the electrical, the, the customer um, connection points are, the CCP points are, so the charging, some of the cables would be shorter. It also then puts the weight distributed between the wheels instead of behind or all um, towards the back, and I thought that would be better. But also packaging is nice because we still have then a lot of some under storage underneath the cabinets there. Now, built this here so this raises up. And that gives us access then to the battery. As you can see in here then, this fits in here well. And the bottom then is captured by the extruded aluminum. So these can't move side to side or front and back. And then they're also captured up and down because this is strapped down. I ran one strap over it. This is a 500, 500 pound working strength and then 1500 pounds braking strength. Now this is again not keeping these from moving side to side. The frame is, but this keeps us from moving up. This being then locked down and having the couch over top of it should keep the batteries in place nicely. They shouldn't really have any reason to move around or create any other problems. We have three 200 amp hour Renogy batteries. They're the lithium ion batteries. We picked these batteries over some of the other ones. Battleborn is another possibility and so forth. But because of the packaging of these, the size of them, I knew about the width that we would have for our bench here. These then were the perfect choice because again, you can see how they package in there and fit in there nicely. Hot power then comes off, flows through a fuse here. It's 400 amp fuse, then to the disconnect. I have the disconnect put on the outside here so that way I can, from the driver's door, turn that on and off when we're coming in and out. Really the biggest times it'll be turned off is when we're putting it into storage or if we're going to be stopped for a while. Then we can use that and I don't have to then come inside to turn it back off. Power then flows out of there, then into the Lynx distributor. This Lynx distributor, distributor has four branches on it. We use the first branch here for the solar second branch here for DC to DC charging, third branch then takes power then um, connects to the multi plus inverter and then the last one here is then uh, goes to the fuse box which you can see here is down mounted in there. I added one extra branch with a small inline circuit here and that then is for the 12 volt air conditioner that's what that one's for there. Other branches then that we have this is the BMV 712 which is the smart battery monitor which tells us then by Bluetooth how the battery is running. It gives us then all the information then on the date, the gauge which will mount somewhere inside later. We have then our isolator. This is for the solar. This is then the solar comes in through the roof gland, runs down here. I'm not quite sure how this is going to be incorporated into the divider yet so it's just hanging there for now. Solar then runs into the isolator so we can turn the solar off if we want. To then the solar charge controller which we use then the Victron the MPPT 130 uh, solar charge controller again running into the first part of the Linksys distributor. Then we have two 30 amp DC to DC 12 volt chargers. They then are hooked again to the customer connection point. The first one on them which is the the top one which is CCP2 I believe is how they describe it and that is rated at 175. The CCP1, which is fully on, or on all the time, is only rated for 60, but it's not switched, so we don't want to use that one. We'll use that for other things. Those then branch then into, again, the Lynx distributor, giving us 60 amps of charging. The 3000 MultiPlus here, which is, again, flows through with 120. We have our 
exterior outlet there. This can then charge also and uh, invert to create uh, regular voltage in here. We have then the fuse panel here. And this is both then the fuse panel for the 120, which is the circuit breakers are here, and then the 12 volt here. We don't have a lot of fuses in there yet, and most of these are off because the electrical is not finished within the van, but the few circuits that we did have connected, we have working now. Also, all of the Victron things are Bluetooth, so you can go onto their app, and then it can give you an idea on what is charging or not, and how the batteries are. Solar, obviously we're not getting any power right now because we're inside. This then tells us the battery monitor, the battery state. Obviously it's at 100% now, so it's not charging. You can see here then, inverter charger there. You can click on it, it tells you where it's at. It's actually charging slowly right now. It's still an absorption charge. It's not actually on the bulk or float charge yet. It's actually pretty informative. The charger controllers, the battery battery charge controls aren't showing up right now because they're off because the van's off. Renogy also has an app that then you can look at all the batteries. These are the three batteries we have. It says where they're at charge-wise 100% on all of them. It also gives you an idea when it's charging how long it thinks it'll take to get to charge from what is currently charging. Obviously that would change if you, you know, had more solar show up or if you were to run the van, but it, it gives you an idea on how long you're gonna charge for in the state that it's in at that moment, which is kind of nice to know. That's all we have. It's fairly, it was fairly complicated actually. Of all the things that I say are fairly straightforward or simple, this one was not. It was very complicated to try to hook all these up. Cutting each one of the wires, crimping it, heat shrinking it, you know, making them all up and then getting them to fit in here definitely took a lot of time. A lot of little individual connections as far as getting the 12 volt power from the battery so you can monitor that here, hooking up then the 12 volt and you'll see some separate video of that underneath the seat to the c33 connector under there to get a 12 volt source to let the smart chargers know that the the vehicle's on all of those little things took quite a bit of time to get all that put in here and mounted correctly but it's been worth it right now so far everything seems to be working well we can charge on solar we can charge when we're plugged in we can charge when we're driving down the road we have 400 watts of solar on the roof there, which we haven't had it out in the sun a lot to see how quickly that will charge, but it'll be definitely be a boost to the batteries when we're traveling. So errors, you're always gonna have errors in every custom project or things you have to redo as you realize. As I built this the first time, when I put it together, that kill switch, I put it on the other side of that bracket or other side of that face there. And then what happened is when I put it up there, you couldn't reach it, it was actually in the where it was hitting the pillar there. So now we had to move that to the other side. So we had to remake that. Now, as I built this, we built this separately. Originally, it was designed to be two tiered, one tier over the battery, so that way you could lean the seats back easier. But we we're gonna have our partition wall here. As I built this, I thought, well, I'll just put the partition wall on this side. You can't, because then the seats can't come back far enough. So now this has to be rebuilt, so that way this doesn't hinge here. It's gotta hinge here which means this part here that raises has to be moved and all this stuff has to be rearranged. So that's what we're gonna work on next is rearranging all this, cutting this floor or cutting this shelf so it tilts and then making these so there's a room for the partition wall to be built right on top. Here is the rework then on the components. You can see I had to cut this all the way down it used to go all the way to the back because this was not divided here you can see i had to add this used to go all the way to the end there now it's got a four inch bit of plywood there and the hinge is forward to do that then i had to add a piece of extruded aluminum onto the bottom here and then cut this down so it can then open otherwise it doesn't actually clear then the door here to do that all of this had to be moved around. I had to move then the Linksys forward. I had to move then the battery monitor forward also. Solar had to come back. The solar cutoff had to come back. The charge controller came back, as did both then the battery to battery chargers came closer together. So it's a little tighter packaging now, but it all still fits. It still clears then. But now I have room for the partition which is our next part here we're working on. And you can see where I added the track, and now we have the partition. We have the sliding part of the partition in. 
There's the rack. Still have to connect these two together. So when this one slides, it'll catch the other one. And then build the solid part of the partition right there.